So today I'd like to show a little field audio recording setup. Today we're going to demonstrate the um, Roland R26. This is a field recorder device. It has two inputs. Uh, one and two takes XLR inputs. Uh, we're going to connect up um, two lapel mics to this R26 recorder and we'll describe a little bit more about it. Here on the table I'm showing an R26 recorder. I'm showing a handle that can be mounted to it. We've got a USB cable, the older style, that can be plugged into the field recorder and it can be used as an audio interface directly with the computer. It doesn't have to be. There's a memory card in here so you can record to a memory card and then uh, import the audio files from the memory card to the computer without connecting them together. That's quite convenient. There is a case for the Roland R26. Uh, I used to use it a lot until I um, bought this shock handle uh, and attached it for a much better shock mounting. And when that's on, you can't put the case on. The case does come with. Uh, there's a couple of other. There was the original foam uh, cover that mounts on the top of the R26. And then there is another um, uh, high-end uh, road. I think this is a road. A rye coat. Um, sound dampener it has a thicker inside that cuts out more db in a higher wind situation it tends to fall off though and so i only use that when i actually need it i'm going to put that back in this little baggie keep them clean and then uh, tuck it back in the pocket for the r26 here like so so there's that. Also there is a strap. This happens to be a Sony strap. I'm not sure what I did with my um, Roland strap, but this one works great. Um, if you want to hook a strap on when I'm working, uh, sometimes I'll put it over my neck and let this hang off of me when I'm recording field audio. If you're just letting this sit around, uh, it's kind of a pain to have the strap on, so I usually start with it off. Fold that back up. Additionally, the R26 is battery powered, but uh, you can use a power adapter if you like. And here's a, a bat power adapter for that one. So that's the R26. The next thing we have is Sennheiser um, lapel mics. So we've got a Sennheiser G2 series. Um, this is the transmitter and we're going to be connecting a lapel microphone to it. It comes with a receiver. That receiver is also a G2 receiver and it's going to connect to our R26. And then uh, we have a G3 series, a little newer series, the uh, EW100. And it's got a receiver with a cable that connects to the R26. And then uh, also a transmitter. Now these um, receivers or transmitters, generally you would put, if you wanted to run the G3 directly into a camera, you can do that. And so you would mount the, um, there's a little shoe mount for that uh, receiver. So you can mount it directly on the top of a camera and plug, there's a separate cable for plugging directly into a camera. Uh, for the focus of this particular discussion though, uh, let's focus on a two lapel mic setup that is valuable for um, doing YouTube videos with two people. Um, I've got a couple of Countryman um, lapel mics uh, found inside of these little nice packs. 
Um, and then also there's uh, various accessories for the countrymen's. There's the cable for plugging a receiver directly into a camera. Keep those cables inside of this uh, container as well. And a few other things. So uh, with that, uh, we'll switch over to a top-down view so we can show you how this is hooked up and show you some of the displays on the lapel mics as well as the R26. Here's our Roland R26. You can see Roland there. Uh, here's our Countryman mics. Let's take and set up a couple of the uh, lapel mics here. So we'll just take one of these cases with the Countryman in it. This is the actual lapel mic. Like so. And we'll unwind that. Plug it into the transmitter. How do you know you have a transmitter? It says body pack transmitter on the back versus this one's covered up because it's been used for other things, but it says receiver under there. The transmitter has a little, you can see also it says mic or line in. It also has a switch you can totally mute if you want. So we'll plug in and then screw in the tightener because we don't want the microphone come out, especially when these body packs are hooked on somebody, they'll want to come out. So make sure you tighten that up good. Now to power on. Um, well, first of all, let's connect up. These uh, have this Sennheiser E3. We'll connect it up to input number one. You can see on the analog on the Roland here that uh, these two inputs, these are analog ins. The XLR input is a analog input, and we'll uh, or analog cable, and we'll take that male end and stick it in the female end here. Um, also, so that'll be the first one. And we'll just move this out of the way. There is a few other things in this bag. Um, there uh, are some more little foam uh, wind protectors. Uh, we tend to lose these. Uh, these fit pretty tight. They're snug. There's a couple of other type fitting ones here. They're tucked in the back. If you want to connect um, the uh, receiver instead of to an R26 with this XLR cable you could unhook it and now it has an unbalanced stereo uh, eighth inch jack that's common on DSLR cameras so you could run this straight into the DSLR camera if you're going to do that then there's a clip this is designed to fit on here it takes a little bit of effort to shove it on, but you can get it on. You got to pull it up hard. And I've got this other thing underneath, but you shove it up hard like so. And you can see it's going to want to slide down in the in there. And it'll fit. It has some grooves and it's designed to fit in there real snug. So now you can mount that directly on a on a camera. I'm going to take that off here though. For our sake, we're not using that setup, so we'll move that out of this out of the way. And we'll put this adapter for stereo inputs right there. And then the next thing is Okay, that's the first one out of the way. So we'll set him here. And so now the next one, we'll hook up another one. This is the, the, this particular one is the G2 model. It's a little older than the G3, uh, works a little better. The G3 has a little bit cleaner signal. We'll plug it into the other input. Again, these are both receiving devices. I'll put my 
number four with number four. Now the other GT2 over here, we do need a Countryman mic for this one. And we unwind that. Usually keep them tied up this way. It's kind of nice. Use the clip to do so and then we'll unwind it. Okay, let's move these where we can see better. Okay. And we'll move this receiver up here where we can see it better. Okay. Countryman mic right there. All right. So then we'll plug this one in. Oh, okay. That one's plugged in nicely. Uh, the next thing we want to do is turn on the uh, Sennheiser lapel receiver and transmitter. So this is the transmitter. You open the little door by pulling down on the sides and you can see that um, we have um, the first thing we see is a transmitting frequency. In this case, this one's set at 158.150. We can see that uh, it has battery on. We can see that it also has a pilot on. You can refer to the, you can find the Sennheiser G2 uh, or the EW100G2 uh, manual online. We have some new batteries in there. There's also a manu uh, menus. Here's uh, up and down menus. You can click set and move through the various um, menus. Uh, and when you select one, for example, bank, you can choose banks. I'm going to um, just return, pick bank for, uh, we don't need to adjust that. These are all set up ready to use. Similarly, the receiver is turned on in the same way, like so. Uh, one thing that's very important to note is that these are using the same frequency and certainly they are 158.150 and if one's on pilot the other has to have a pilot signal. It, the pilot helps to keep the signal clean. So very important they both need to be on the same frequency. If somebody's messing around with one of them they might accidentally change that and so you can go into set and alter the frequency back to where they're the same. Uh, the other thing is these particular devices, um, if someone in the same vicinity is using the same frequency, you'll have conflict. So we want to make sure they're both the same frequency. So we can close the doors. These are ready to go. We can also see that um, uh, these particular radios, if the receiver is green, that means it's receiving from the transmitter. We can talk into the transmitter and you can see there's a monitor uh, bar that's moving along. If I talk very loud, um, it's actually not peaking here, but um, you can sit and before you ever plug it into the um, field recorder, you can make sure you have a good signal moving across those two. Okay, uh, similarly, we'll do the same thing on the Sennheiser EW100G3. Uh, if you're actually going out to shoot, you're going to want to make sure you have some good battery life uh, left. And both of these happen to have good battery life. You'll notice when you turn on the receiver, if the transmitter is not transmitting, it's going to say mute. Now let's turn on the transmitter for the EWG3. Uh, good battery there. One thing that's important to note, so let's do similarly a little test. We can close that door. And we can do a test, test, test. We can see this one's a little different. We can see that here on the screen, um, we can see a little monitor on the left side like this. And as I talk, you can see us monitoring there. And we can see the receiver is receiving a nice signal as well on the left side right here. It's receiving that signal as I talk like this. Okay, we'll close the door. Uh, now the EW100G3 is ready to go. Okay. 
So next up is the Roland. Um, if you're just in a in a, like a studio setting, um, this setup can be pushed off to the side. Uh, these lapel mics would be connected to somebody. And uh, to turn it on, there's a power on. First of all, let's look at a couple of things. We showed you the inputs. There's a memory card here. You can open up the little door. It's designed to be water resistant. Um, there's a memory card. Um, it has a 16 gigabyte high speed memory card. That's uh, usually not needed so much. It's one I had around. Um, an audio recorder uh, doesn't record that fast compared to video. So a slower speed is fine. You can see that you can look at an Arlen, a Roland R26 online manual to see what your limitations are there. You'll notice there is a USB input. This does come with a US, here is a USB cable uh, that matches. So if you wanted to plug into your computer and use this as an audio interface, you could. Um, just plug in there and away you go. Except for that one, we may need a different plug. Let's double check that. Oh yeah, that plugs in nicely. And uh, if you do plug into a computer, if your computer doesn't recognize it, you'll need to download the Roland R26 drivers for your particular operating system from Roland. You can just do a Google search for Roland R26 drivers. A few other things. Uh, here's the DC input. If you want to run this without batteries or if your batteries are dead, there's the cable. Uh, for plugging into the AC or the DC adapter. Generally the batteries last quite long. Uh, we should probably look at that. Let's unplug these for a second. A couple other things to note about the Ireland R R26 is it has uh, a very nice stereo system. It has uh, two mics that are directional and two mics that are omnidirectional for four stereo mics that combine to create a really nice signal. Um, also, it can slide out of the pack like this, the holder, in which case we can see where the batteries are on the back. Happens to have four double A's in it right now. Always keep four double A's with you in case they run out. You can add in a separate mic that takes a 8th inch stereo or 8th inch mono input. Your headphones connect right here. Here's the volume for the headphones. And then here's the power switch right here. Now these little bars are to connect your strap to. You can slide those in and tie those on. We'll put the cover back on. Oh, also you'll notice there is a mount bracket right here. So if you did want to use, go out and record some nice stereo field recording out, outside or in a particular environment, you're going to want to make sure you're not holding this with your hand because it'll pick up every little piece of um, noise. Even just sliding like this will create significant noise in the audio signal and you want to avoid that. So if you want to use the shock mount, has a little uh, brass spinner here. You hook it right, slide it in the little cutout, tie it on. And now you have a shock, a, a field a recorder with a nice shock mount. See how those are separated? You hold this quietly with your hand and you be very still with it. And you never touch this with your hands. When you're doing field recording, don't plug anything into here. You will want some headphones to plug in here so you can hear what's going on with the signal. So that sets up a nice stereo field recorder. So we'll take that off for now for our example. When we're using the field recorder, um, we always want headphones so we can hear what's going on. 
It's got nice little monitors on it, but, some, but without headphones, you can't tell if there's a strange noise or something being introduced or audio artifacts. So you always want to monitor with the headphones. Now, if you want to go with a very lightweight setup, uh, you can just use a pair of headphones that you would use to listen to an MP3 player or, a, or an older iPhone, but it needs to have an eighth inch um, stereo jack. Stereo jacks have um, the, the two little separators, a tip ring sleeve they call it. It's eighth inch, plugs into here. If you uh, have better headphones, great, use them. Often um, I will, if I'm backpacking or something and want this system with me, I'll just use a pair of lightweight headphones. They don't sound as good or monitor the audio quality nearly as well, but they're very small. So we can plug that in, put it in our ears, and now we'll plug our, um, our microphones back in. So here we are plugging into our microphones. Jacks, uh, same over here. Now to turn this on, uh, you can see it says hold power. So we're gonna hold it until we see the power come on. Uh, you see the R26, enjoy recording. And you'll notice nothing's happening. That's because this is the default uh, setup and we can't hear anything until we put it into monitoring mode. So if you push the record button once, now we're in a monitoring mode and you can see uh, on our screen here, on the left side is uh, the mi this, set of, this microphone. So if I start talking into this microphone, actually, looks like this is the, yes, the top one is, the top one is the left. So as I talk into it, we can see uh, that I have a, a strong signal. If I talk into the right microphone, you can see that I have strong signal, but also both, both of them are picking me up. Now we have a problem with our, so I'm going to take, and I'm going to tie, take this, um, this microphone, and I'm going to tie it to my shirt so it can hear me talking. And um, the first thing you see, we have to be very careful with our audio signals. I'm over driving um, the recording here, so we want to back it off. Well. Uh, that is cr the audio for these two um, inputs is controlled by this left one, okay? Now, uh, we can see zero dBs on the far right. If a signal bumps up against it, it will start to clip and make, uh, it will not sound good. We generally want to keep our audio signal around minus six dB um, at a good volume without going over too much. So it all depends on how loud somebody's talking. So I'm going to back that off even more. We never want to bump up against the zero up there. We can ride up to the minus six, but if people start talking louder, then that's too high. So we need to back it off a little bit. So the idea is to kind of stay minus six, it just depends on how, li how loud a person is. And so that's looking pretty good. Now if I put the other lapel mic on me as well, I'll tie it to my shirt. Now we should see both coming in somewhat similar. Well, we're obviously seeing that one of them is a little lower than the other, and that can be problematic. Um, I want to listen though left and right so I'm going to turn up the volume on my headphones and I can start to hear on the headphones. I can hear whether I have just a one mic on on the left or if I start talking on the right like this. Okay, so um, one thing we have to kind of watch for 
since I only have one control for volume, even though the two channels will be recorded separately on the memory on the SD card and can be separately modified in a video post-production, it is often helpful if right at the time you record if you can get your balance a little better. So I think what I'd like to do is increase the volume, the recording gain uh, produced by um, the transmitter. And so the way you do that is you can go in here and modify the menus. So let's see, can I change this yet? I have to go in and edit. Let's see. I want to go down until I see something that looks like sensitivity. So I'll edit sensitivity. And I can bump up my sensitivity. It was at a minus 10 dB. I could put it at, um, or it was at a minus 20. I could put it at a minus 10. Now, when I do a minus 10, we can see that my right microphone, which is the one I'm on, it's actually much louder than the other one. So maybe I'll just put that back. So minus 20. Um, the other thing I can do is try to adjust the, um, okay. So I can try to adjust the other microphone. So the, this uh, G2 is older. It only would show a minus 30, minus 20, minus 10 dB sensitivity. The G3 has a little more uh, resolution. So let's see if we can get them to line up a little better. So here's the G3. I'm going to click the set button. Sensitivity happens to be uh, available immediately on this particular one. If not, you just move through your menus. And so I'm going to lower the sensitivity. Whoops. Go back up. I'm going to hit set. I'm going to lower the sensitivity a little bit so it lines up more closely with the G2. See that? Both of the uh, inputs, I've got them both right next to me, to my mouth. I'd like them to be really similar so when I have two people, there's very little, if any, difference between gain, which is a volume setting, uh, between the two people if they were speaking the same loudness. Okay, so I'm gonna, I like that. This one happens to be a minus 27 dB. The other one was set at minus 20, but with the, all the mics set up, we can tell on our recorder that they're about the same. So I'm gonna hit store that and get out of the menus by pushing on and off. Okay, so we basically have our transmitters and our receivers both set up like so. And this whole time, we have actually not been recording. You can see that the numbers are not moving. The record light is red flashing. You may or may not be able to see that here. But more importantly, on the display, it looks like a kind of like a stop and a pause. When that's flashing, it's just in monitoring mode. It's actually not recording. And you have to be in monitoring mode to see the monitors. You can turn up the volume a little bit more. In my case, I'm not planning on talking louder, so I'm going to hold it about right there. It's very important that you, like I said, you don't go up to zero. Keep it around six would be great. Now if I want to actually record, I just push the record button and you can see that the time code starts moving. You can also see the right here to the left of the time code is the record symbol which is solid now. So the device is actually recording. And then you go ahead and you uh, run through your recording and when you're done you hit stop. You can see that up here uh, to the left of the time code the stop symbol has been activated but what if you want to play back your um, recording? Well, you certainly can do that. You hit play and that'll play through, through your recording. You can hit, you can hit 
Right. Okay, so uh, we've just played back the recording there. Um, and then um, um, there, you'll want to review the manual uh, just on playback. Um, as soon as I only have one uh, recording here, I could do another one. So if I push once again, I get a, the red light is flashing on the recorder, record button, meaning I'm just monitoring. To actually record, I push it again, it goes solid, red line, so, red dot solid, the time code's moving, I'm creating a second recording now. So now I'll hit stop. Okay, so if I hit play to play back, Okay, so um, let's see. Menus, there's a number of menus here. Um, at the moment, we've been focusing on recording just for the two lapel mics. And so the input setup is significant here. We can see that if you click select analog in, which are these two, then it says, uh, what kind of recording are we doing? Well, you'll see that input one is shown here. Phantom sends power from the device to a microphone. In this case, we have Lamel Pell mics, which are self-powered, so we don't use Phantom. The input limiter um, limits if it wants to get loud. If you're outside and a car comes by that's loud, it'll limit it to have less distortion. And then also, um, when you're using lapel mic, sometimes you're, you brush your body or things against the lapel mic, which is a very low frequency. And so we can cut off that using a low frequency cutoff, low cutoff frequency or LCF by turning that on. And then we can see the LCF cutoff, what frequency, 100 hertz or lower, um, allows um, is pretty good for lapel mics. Uh, for other kinds of recording, you might want to change it to something like uh, 400 hertz, but we would like the lower one for lapel mics. So you don't have to do much with that the way it's set up right now. Uh, internal mics, uh, there's also limiters for the top internal mics up here, and those are also documented in the manual. Um, so let's go back. If for any reason you wanted to plug in a, another mic over here and get a third external mic, you can set that. So in our recording setup here, um, you can see that at the moment we've got a recording mode of just two channels, these two channels. And we've selected the source as being just the analog and you can see it shows us with the two mics, our recording source is analog. And this is nice because if all I care about is the two lapel mics right now, then this will just record two channels and I don't have to use up my memory card or worry about integrating those in post. Okay, so also, but what if I wanted to not use these two mics and I wanted to hook up and go actually outside or anywhere else and get sort of the stereo stereo sound which is very rich um, not directional but it provides rich information then you would change your recording mode you could go to a four channel mode in this case you would use your XY mics plus your omni directional mics and you can see the recording source is XY and omnidirectional like that. Um, you could also choose to do a six channel setup. In a six channel setup, you could do your XY and omnidirectional, plus you could add the two lapel mics, in which case you could have the environment around you being very rich if you're doing an outside type of recording 
and then you want to hear the speakers. You might have two people, each one has a lapel mic, and you want to hear the environment plus the people's voice nicely in a very um, convincing, rich manner, which is we are used to in real life. Then this allows the, you to bring all six of them together in a single recording. Uh, for our setup here, we will just choose two for right now and we will make sure our recording source is the analog, like so, two different analog mics, and that's all it's going to record right now. So now we can focus just on uh, those. All right, so we've uh, looked at setup for the audio recording. Uh, there are several other things in here. Uh, date time, you want to make sure that your date time is set. That's the timestamp it's going to put on your audio files. When you go to synchronize with video, um, it's very helpful if they actually have the correct dates. They'll line up and match up might much better. If you need to format your SD card, that's where you format it. Um, and then uh, there's a number of other things. If you're going to use it as a computer, an audio face to interface to your computer, here's where you set it up. Let's talk about sample rate for a minute. Sample rate is how often, when, when you have an analog signal and you want to record it, uh, we record digitally so we can use in in a computer. An analog signal is continuous by the natures of physics. Um, when we digitize it, we basically sample the little uh, places along a waveform. Mm -hmm. The sample rate, in this case, it's showing 48 kilohertz. It, sa it samples an audio signal at 48,000 uh, times a second. Okay, um, that's a nice sample rate. That's really common uh, for um, aligning with video. Video is often captured in a video camera at 48 kilohertz. Uh, you'll find that when you're using your um, video editing tools, um, they'll want to edit video audio in 48 kilohertz. You can always sample higher and get much better audio. 96 doubles that. It uses the memory card up very quickly and um, you also have to process it first in a tool that's an audio digital audio workstation um, it's just software on a computer but it's it makes for a double step process you get much better audio quality but you have to ask yourself is it worth it to introduce multiple steps in your in your editing workflow so if if uh, the 48 kilohertz sounds good enough to you, which it is quite good for video, just use that. And then you don't have to do a double step. You can bring it directly into your video editing software. The other part is bit depth. So for every sample you take on that audio signal, um, it encodes in a number of bits in the software. The more bits you have, the better it will encode. I recommend leaving this at 24-bit audio. There is a 16-bit version, which is um, will give you less quality um, audio, but allows you to put more audio on a on a disc on your um, SD card. So I would keep it at 48 kilohertz, unless you really want to do some higher-end um, stereo recording, for example. And a 24-bit seems to work quite well. And then you, of course, if you're not going to use lapels and you want to use the stereo recorder, you'll, you have to switch your channels to use a four channel recording. Again, that four channel recording will give you both the XY microphones and the omnidirectional microphones. Okay, so let's put this back. We'll go back to a, whoops. We'll go back to the Oops. We'll go back to the two channel setup. We're going to use our analog microphones like that. 
and that should work very nicely. Okay, so the setup's uh, done. Hit the menu to get out of there, and you're ready to record. Uh, there's several other features for marking your audio and doing other things. Uh, I'll tell you to refer to the manual if you want to get into that much detail. So it's important to uh, take care of the mics. Uh, the mics are very high-end uh, lapel mics and um, one way we can take care of those is to put them away properly when we're done using them. Uh, one of the things people often forget is to turn off the power. They get busy on whatever they're trying to record. Forget to turn off the transmitters and receivers and pretty soon their batteries are dead. So always remember to shut off the transmitters and receivers by holding down the off button on both sides and uh, this will allow you to use your batteries a lot longer. Again if you want better microphone, better uh, headphones feel free to invest in those. They have uh, cheap ones to very high-end ones uh, but again I found just a set like this is usually enough to get enough for video. We'll shut the power off. holding those down, shut power off. By the way, this one is already down a third on battery. Um, if I was going to do a new shoot, I would make sure I replaced those so I didn't run out in the middle of a shoot or a recording. Uh, here we're just doing a little sample so they're going to last for an hour or so more. So I'll turn that off. Okay, both are off. Now we want to take care of these microphones like we said, so we'll unscrew them. I generally just take and wind them up like this. You can take the little clip and hook them together so they're not unwinding on you. Please take good care of these. They'll last you a long time and they're, they record at a, a really good uh, fidelity. So we'll tuck in the little thing there. And when you do take them off, double check that you didn't lose your little um, foam because next time you go to use it, you want this all ready to go and you want, don't want to have to find one of those. So it's best to put it away in a condition where it can be used right away. There's one. Get our other one here. Like that. And we'll put it away. And I'll just hook up my little clip around there just to kind of keep it together. Slide the cable up there. That's Velcro to hold this together. Keep these cases very important can unplug. Could power off ahead of time if we wanted to, like so. Um, let's do, so let's set that aside for a minute. And let's talk about what if I wanted to do a stereo recording. Um, this thing produces wonderful stereo audio. We'll screw our um, shock mount ha handle grip right on there. Um, this of course is designed to be held. The next thing we'll do is put a, um, our microphone on. Like so. We'll power it up. You just hold it till it comes on. Okay. 
And uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to menus because we've switched into a different kind of recording. Recording setup. We'll use the four channel stereo mics. Um, by default, we've got four channel. It's going to use XY Omni. Um, you can switch that just to, let's see, what else? You can do other kinds of four channels, but here we're fo our focus is to grab B-roll type audio. We want to hear the environment around us. XY Omni, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. So now when we record, something's different. So we'll turn on the recording monitor here. And I can hear the sound out all around me. Here, I'll just start recording. So now when I, I pushed record, I can hear uh, the sound all around me. Now you'll notice the monitors switch. I have Omni left and right, and the XYs left and right. You can hear that. And then um, my, uh, let's see, which one's control which? I think that's, oh, those are separated, that's right. So now if I want to pick up the gain, this controller is turning up the gain there. I forgot, I'll have to look at the manual. This one you can assign to different things, but all four of them are connected together. If you're in a loud environment, you still have to be careful. The XY, um, so this XY, I'm over here on the left, so it's picking up my left more. If I were to do the other side, you can see that it's clipping with that much noise, so I would have to back off. Uh, other thing you should notice is, I'm in a loud environment, see that red peak? So that's clipping. You need to back off your gain. So if I really want to get my finger snapping in there, you got to kind of monitor it and back it off. Now if it's just my voice, I'd like to turn it up a ways so I can hear things around me. I'm in a house right now. Let's say I just wanted to hear the uh, wind blowing through the vents. Let's listen. Another thing is notice just touching the thing. I get all kinds of noise. See that? Listen to that. So when I'm recording, I want to set my steady. Now, even when I'm moving this around, we can pick up the sound. So the idea is you hold still and you kind of turn your body as a whole. I can hear a little bit in the other room off the left side. Let's see, I can, so I can hear the, the off the left side. I can hear me talking. If I turn, notice as I touch it, we hear sound. We can hear the sound going all the way around. So when you're out in the field, you're gonna hold it very steady, not slide anything, and hold still and listen. You can turn a little bit. As long as you have your headphones on, you can hear whether you're introducing um, sounds that you don't want in your recording. And there you have it. So we've been recording. Again, we hit stop to, to turn off the recording like that. And if we want to play back, we hit play. And I'll play the last one. So there was our recording. So now if I hold down next, I can fast forward like that. So you can, so we can move back and forth through the recording just by holding next. And I'm thinking maybe doubles moves it faster. Yeah. So if I double click, it moves faster. So there you have it. 
and uh, play back your recording. It's always good to play back your recording when you're in the field because if you made a mistake, you it, once you go back to wherever you came from, you're not going to be there anymore. And you won't be able to fix the recording. So it's best to listen to it while you're in the field and make sure it sounds good. Listen careful to it. And then uh, you can. it's a keeper if you don't have any issues. Otherwise, you should re-record it. Uh, we'll set this back so it's ready to work with lapel mics. Go back to the menu. Recording setup. We'll switch back to our two channel. And we're going to switch to, whoops, I think I missed something. Get in a hurry. So two channel. By default, it says internal. We're going to use the analog mics and it gives us the nice picture. So we know we're going to have two separate lapel mics. And then we're done. So uh, you turn the device off by holding the power down. And that will turn it off. And at this point, we're ready to take the uh, audio and put it into our computer. So you might have to slide this a little bit because um, the way I have this set up now, this case will slide off because I cut that out a little bit so I could put on the shock mount, which wasn't originally part of the setup. It's sort of a modification. This little guy is a little tricky to unplug. If you can't get it with your fingernails, you can hold it on the side. So to take the memory card out, you just push in and it pops out. And then you can stick it in a card reader and import it into your computer. So you can now synchronize this, the video with this audio. When you do record with your camera, make sure you record audio with the camera. And then you'll be able to synchronize with this audio using the audio track itself. And it'll do it automatically. So there you have it. Uh, to take this off, you can leave it up like that, but you just turn the brass there, it comes right off. When you put it in, make sure it sits right inside that cutout. And you're done. So that's it for today.